She's the picture of effervescence on TV, but in her personal life, Rachel Ray has endured legal troubles, destroyed homes, and painful family strife. Rachel Ray has one of the most recognizable faces in the culinary world, but perhaps even more recognizable is her iconic voice. Oh my god, I'm not that of much of a big mouth! But while that quality has endeared her to plenty of fans, it's also related to childhood illnesses that she suffered through. Ray has been open about the fact that she endured multiple instances of croup, a type of infection that tightens the upper airway and causes coughing and difficulty breathing. And her vocal cord troubles continued into adulthood. In 2008, there were even rumors that she had throat cancer. Those rumors turned out to be false. But that isn't to say that Ray was completely fine. A representative for Ray told People magazine in October 2008, that she needed surgery on her vocal cords, but that it was just to remove a benign cyst. The surgery took place in December, and Ray's tapings for Food Network and her talk show went on as planned. According to the New York City Police Department, there were 1,417 instances of robbery in the city in January 2024. Since New York has a population of over 8 million people, you only have about a 0.01% chance of being mugged there. In general, it would be fair to conclude then that it's a relatively safe place to walk around in. Nevertheless, Rachel Ray has been mugged in New York on multiple occasions. As she admitted to People magazine in 2007, when she was working in Manhattan and living in Queens in the late 1990s, she was mugged by the same person twice in one week. The first time, he assaulted her in her apartment's foyer, prompting Ray to pull out her mace. The second time, the assailant was more forceful. As Ray recalled, he dragged me down the alley and beat the crap out of me with his gun. This prompted Ray to move back to the Adirondacks section of upstate New York, where she then began to work managing restaurants on Lake George. If you're a fan of Rachel Ray, then you surely know how important family is to her, especially her mother Elsa, who accompanied her daughter to her first appearance on Today, which led to Ray being noticed by the Food Network. But like many close-knit families, Ray's has experienced their fair share of tragedy, like in 2013, when her aunt Geraldine passed away at the age of 77. Geraldine was house-sitting for her niece in November when she went outside to feed the birds and locked herself out of the home. After trying to break a window to get back inside, she collapsed in the frigid temperatures and was discovered the next day. Geraldine's daughter Gina blamed her cousin for the death and negligence. She also noted that her mother hadn't been given her own key for the house-sitting, and that she likely collapsed due to lung issues. The family tension got even worse when Ray didn't attend the funeral, as she was taping a show at the time. Her brother Manny later came to her defense and claimed that no one else was upset that she didn't show up to the funeral. Rachel Ray's husband, John Cusimano, gets nearly as much attention as his wife does. An actor, lawyer, producer, and musician, he frequently accompanies her on her shows, at public events, and on her social media accounts. They might even seem like the definition of couple goals. They've been married for nearly 20 years, as they wed at a Tuscan castle in 2005 and renewed their vows in the same venue in 2015. They've also returned to the castle every year with family and friends to celebrate their anniversary. Here's my beautiful bride. Hi, honey. Ciao! Happy anniversary! Despite all those happy traditions, this marriage hasn't been without its share of trouble, including rumors of infidelity. One woman from Florida allegedly met Cusimano in New York in 2000 and carried on an affair with him for years. Various publications have claimed that he's cheated as many as six times, but Ray has been having none of it. As she insisted to People magazine in 2007, I've known where he is every night since we've been married. If the rumors are indeed false, then this is hardly the most tragic chapter in Ray's life, but there's still a pain to deal with. Rachel Ray has been very vocal about her love of her furry friends, especially her pit bull, Isabu, who passed away in 2020. So it's not surprising that she eventually got into the canine culinary game by launching a dog food brand called Rachel Ray Nutrish. Not only does the brand aim to offer nutritional, high-quality products to pooches everywhere, but it also helps fund the Rachel Ray Foundation, as portions from the food sales go to help animals in need. Unfortunately, though, Rachel Ray Nutrish has been hit with lawsuits on multiple occasions. In 2018, a complaint was filed that claimed the brand contained weed killer and shouldn't be promoted as natural. The claim was dismissed at first due to lack of specificity. Then it was amended and refiled before being dismissed yet again. Rachel's camp says 
It's the safest food on the market. Then in 2020, another lawsuit was filed that claimed that testing revealed that some of the brand's food turned up dog DNA as one of the ingredients. There are only six ingredients listed on the brand's labels, but the suit alleged that it contained much more than advertised. And yet another lawsuit claimed that the food was potentially harmful to dogs due to false advertising about its health benefits, although this suit was also dismissed. Many celebrity chefs have taken hits to their reputation after accusations of sexual misconduct, and perhaps none more notoriously than Mario Batali. He was one of the food world's most famous and successful figures when multiple women accused him of harassment in 2017. He eventually settled two of the cases and was found not guilty in another, and since then he's mostly faded away from public view. Rachel Ray is one of Batali's colleagues and friends, and when she chose to publicly stand up for him, she was unsurprisingly hit with backlash. During a 2019 interview with NPR, Ray admitted that she still spoke with her fellow Food Network star, but that she also hadn't asked him about the accusations. The subject of the hashtag MeToo movement also came up in that interview. As Ray explained, I think I've always been treated extremely fairly at work, yeah. Do we speak inappropriately in kitchens, men and women? Both of us do. That doesn't mean I'm not super empathetic and supportive of women in the industry that have gone through hell. Ultimately, this was probably a case of Ray being adjacent to tragedy rather than enduring the brunt of the tragedy herself. But it demonstrates how wide-ranging the consequences are when it comes to a pattern of inappropriate behavior. The flip side of a legion of adoring fans is the people who just can't stand you. And Rachel Ray certainly hasn't been immune to this phenomenon, as she's endured more than her fair share of criticism from those who don't exactly agree with her culinary methods. There's even an online blog called Rachel Ray Sucks. But it's not just strangers on the internet who have expressed their ire. It's also some of her colleagues. For example, in a 2009 interview with ABC, Martha Stewart said, She professed that she cannot bake. She just did a new cookbook, which is just a re-edit of a lot of her old recipes. That's not good enough for me. Much of this criticism seems to stem from Ray's fast and easy approach to cooking, which is arguably what made her famous in the first place. The late Anthony Bourdain was one of her fiercest critics, as he once told Time magazine, She genuinely offends me. When Rachel tells you that it's perfectly okay to buy pre-chopped onion from the supermarket, I mean, how hard is it to chop an onion? And Emeril Lagasse reportedly once said, She doesn't know anything about food. However, that beef seems like it was eventually quashed, as Lagasse frequently appeared on Ray's talk show. With more than 20 cookbooks to her name, Rachel Ray has published hundreds of recipes. That number might even go into the thousands when you also add up her recipes that have been published online or in magazines. It's probably fair to think that she didn't create every single one of those entirely on her own. But some industry insiders have accused her of much worse. In 2012, the New York Times published a story called I Was a Cookbook Ghostwriter, which claimed that many celebrity chefs, including Rachel Ray, aren't actually writing their own recipes or cookbooks. Afterwards, Ray responded on an episode of her talk show, this is how I spend the little time at home I have with my family. I spend in front of these little notebooks, in front of the computer. It sort of takes away from all of that to not be able to call that writing. Of course that's writing. It doesn't mean you don't value the people who write the glossary or that help organize the pantry or that work on a project, but a writer is still a writer. When Rachel Ray was launched as part of the daytime TV lineup, a live audience was a crucial component. However, despite Ray's hard work and endless hours devoted to her shows, some people have claimed that she's not that great a host when the cameras stop rolling. TripAdvisor reviews of the show's taping experience are a mixed bag, with some thoroughly enjoying their time there and others saying things like, don't get your hopes up. One unhappy audience member from 2019 even said that she felt sorry for Ray's colleagues while claiming, she acted like someone who did not want to be there and seemed in a foul mood. For heaven's sake, if it's too much, why continue with your show? But Ray probably isn't too worried about those negative reviews. Her talk show wrapped up in 2023, and she's gone on to focus on other TV projects, such as Rachel Ray's Rebuild on Hulu. Rachel Ray's Rebuild focuses on people who have experienced a tragedy similar to one that Ray herself experienced. The destruction of her Adirondack home from a fire in 2020. She had helped design and build the home in Lake Luzerne, New York, that ultimately succumbed to a devastating chimney fire. I ran upstairs to get medicine, my notebooks. 
uh, my mother's high school ring. Ray lost many sentimental items in the fire, so when she set out to rebuild, she tried to make the new home as much like the old one as possible. But she ultimately had to make some changes to safeguard against another potential fire, such as adding a tin roof. While this loss was surely emotionally devastating for Ray, she had plenty of opportunities to move forward and look on the bright side of things. In addition to rebuilding this house, she also purchased a home in Tuscany in 2021. As if a massive house fire weren't enough tragedy to deal with, Rachel Ray had another disaster arrive on her doorstep in September 2021 when Hurricane Ida struck New York City. While Ida wasn't quite a technical hurricane when it struck the city, the post-tropical cyclone still broke rainfall records in New York City, causing millions in damage and more than a dozen fatalities. It also damaged more than 3% of the city's buildings, including Ray's apartment. Ray revealed to People magazine that the storm completely wiped out the recently renovated apartment, including the speaker in the ceiling, the fireplace, and all of the seams in the wall. As she put it, it was like the apartment just literally melted. When a remediation team attempted to assess the issue, they broke a water pipe which flooded the apartment once again, along with the entire building down to the ground level. But by the 2021 holiday season, Ray was back in the apartment for Christmas and showing off her decor on her talk show.